Hi everyone, Jim here. Welcome to my channel, Mystery and Mayhem. I want to thank everyone for the response to my last video when I announced the February reading event, uh, Homes is Where the Heart Is. It uh, looks like a lot of you are really interested in joining, and uh, I think that's fantastic. I, 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 I think I was just happy to see all your responses, and I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with uh, for the reading prompts. I wanted to show you a few more pastiche novels today I thought uh, I'd grab a few off my shelf and uh, maybe give you guys um a few ideas as to what you can do for your uh, pastiche prompt which is uh, for week three in February so I'm going to start with uh, now I've showed uh, a couple of these books before they're from the Titan books series of the further adventures of Sherlock Holmes and it's these volumes which are just beautiful beautifully done and they all have the same kind of unique look but just different colors and different titles but they're just very handsome looking handsome looking books and uh, I wanted to show you what I have I think I have 14 or 50 of them I, I've lost count but I think there's about 20 to 25 in the whole series if not more but uh, yeah this one is called Sherlock Holmes the Veiled Detective by David Stewart Davies and uh, I really enjoyed this one um, it, it had Watson had a very important part in this and uh, I, I always like when the writers um, focus a lot on Watson because I think Watson is just as important of a character as Sherlock Holmes is so that was an enjoyable book uh, I'm just gonna go through these one by one and you guys can look at them and then I got a few others after that this one is called the ectoplasmic man by Daniel Stashower and again I mean I got these all at uh, indigo books which is up here in Canada and I just you know over the years I just go and I pick them up and that's what the spine would look like they're fairly easy to spot on the bookshelf you can either get them there or order them off Amazon or off the Titan book site but that's uh, yeah that's a beautiful book this one is the scroll of the dead again by David Stewart Davies and it's got the Sphinx and the Pyramid up there. And that was an enjoyable book. There's only, he's a good writer, good Holmes writer. There's only one that I, I kind of threw me off that I didn't really enjoy of his. But for the most part, really good writer. And this is called The Man from Hell by Barry Roberts. Nice yellow and gray, which just pops. Like, like look at that. I just love that. And the back cover has a big silhouette of Holmes as well. And this one I featured on the, one of my other videos, uh, my Walt Newton video, but a different copy, a mass pay, uh, part market paperback, uh, The Adventure of the Peerless Peer by Philip Jose Farmer. And this is where uh, Sherlock Holmes meets uh, Tarzan and the Shadow. And it, this was a lot of fun. I mean, Philip Jose Farmer is just a fun writer. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. You see Tarzan up there. That's from All Story Magazine, Tarzan of the Apes' first appearance. So, yeah, if you can still pick these up, I don't know how rare they are or difficult they are to find, but you can still find them in the bookstore now and then. This one is The War of the Worlds by Manly Wade Wellman and Wade Wellman, his son. And this is uh, where Sherlock Holmes is involved in the H.G. Uh, Wells' The War of the Worlds. And that's, uh, yeah, that was a very enjoyable. You know, people who are purists and they just want to read the original canon of Sherlock Holmes, they miss out on a lot of fun, fun stories and books about Sherlock Holmes. You know, I mean, they're not all, all the greatest. Some aren't very well written, but I think Titan books really... Um, I really researched these. There's not a rotten apple in the bunch, I don't think, for these Titan uh, reprints. This is The Giant Rat of Sumatra by Richard L. Boyer. Now that's a telling of uh, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle uh, mentioned in passing reference The Giant Rat of Sumatra case in one of his stories. And a few authors have actually written the story that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle just kind of mentioned as a, as, as a, you know, throw it out there he, and he did that a lot in his stories just mentioned cases that he had never written but you know he just wanted to give the impression that Holmes and Watson were very busy consulting detectives so that's the giant rat of Sumatra 
the next one is I've showed this before on the channel Sherlock Holmes versus Dracula by Lauren D. Estelman and Lauren D. Estelman had uh, has a good history with the character of Sherlock Holmes he's been writing Sherlock Holmes pastiche for for years and uh, a good writer good book and the Titanic tragedy by William Seal or, or Sale, I'm not too sure how to pronounce his name. I haven't read this one yet, and I'm I'm debating whether I might read this particular one for my week three prompt for pastiche. I haven't decided yet, but as soon as I decide what I'm going to read for for my uh, February reading challenge, I'm going to let you guys know. I've got a good idea what I'm going to do for legacy, but I won't let you in on that right now. Soon. The next one is. Sherlock Holmes' the Seventh Bullet. Now, I, I bought this used. You see, it's kind of ripped there. I got it at one of our thrift stores that are nearby, but it's still in pretty good shape. And that's by Daniel D. Victor, The Seventh Bullet. Uh, I featured this one before earlier, too, in my uh, occult detective Sherlock Holmes, uh, Seance for a Vampire by Fred Saberhagen. Uh, yeah, really fun story. Going up against Dracula again. Dracula, obviously. Good book. This is called The Moonstone's Curse by Sam Siciliano. And that's just a handsome copy. I love that blue and gold go so well together. They, they just, they do such a good job on these books. And that font, I love that font. And that's, that's a fairly thick one. And I haven't read that one yet, so that's, that's on my list to read. This is called, oh, this was very fun. This was The Devil's Promise. Oh, yeah, is that the one? Maybe that's the one I didn't like so much. The Devil's Promise by David Stewart Davies with a forward by Mark Gaddis. And he, uh, Mark Gaddis was responsible for the Sherlock TV show uh, put on by BBC a few years back. So that's a nice cover, but I think that might be the one I didn't care for too much, if I remember correctly, by David Stewart Davies. But you might like it. Yeah, uh, this this is this is the one by David Stewart. Oh, Stewart Douglas, sorry. Uh, the Counterfeit Detective. That was uh, that was a good one, and that's uh, that's just a nice cover right there too. The orange and the yellow. This is called The Albino's Treasure, again by Stuart Douglas. Now, I'd read the back of these, but I, I don't want the, the video to go on too long. But that's just, uh, again, a handsome volume. They, they just do such a good job. And last but not least, The Whitechapel Horrors by Edward B. Hanna. And... Uh, as you could probably tell, it involves Jack the Ripper. I guess Holmes going up against Jack the Ripper. And there's been a few stories where Holmes has gone up against Jack the Ripper. Uh, Lindsay Faye's Dust and Shadow. Ellery Queen's A Study in Terror. Um, the last Sherlock Holmes story. So, yeah, again, he's got a good history of going up against uh, Jack the Ripper. So, yeah, that's it for my Titan uh, volumes of Further Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Now, <clears throat> Titan also does another series called The New Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which have this style of cover. And this is called The Vanishing Man by Philip Purser Hallard. Now, this is the only one of this series I have, but there's quite a few others. And I think the difference between the, the prior books I just showed you and this one is I think these are brand new written for this series whereas the others were, were reprints from, from other prior publishers but uh, yeah <clears throat> those are good books now just a few more I've got I got this one years ago it's a mammoth book New Sherlock Holmes Adventures I love this book. I love the mammoth books. They just look awesome on the shelf. And there's so many stories in here. Um, it's got a story in here by Michael Moorcock, uh, L.B. Greenwood, Stephen Baxter, Peter Tremaine. Uh, yeah, Edward D. Hotch. And I, I love this book and I love the cover. And uh, yeah, I was just happy to get that. And the thing with this one, in the back, it has kind of a chronology of his cases. And kind of a, a bibliography like a, an appendix of Sherlock Holmes appearances like the canon and pastiche which is just nice to have 
So that's uh, that's a book worth getting if you can find it. Now, I've got one of these big books of Sherlock Holmes edited by Otto Penzler. I've shown you big books on this channel before, and this is just these are just lovely books, and they just open so well and they read so well. They've got the, the double columns so they can fit a lot of stories in here, and there's there's all kinds of stories in there, man. And if you're looking for some good pastiche fiction, and I think there's actually a canon canonical story in here as well. So that's a beautiful cover. Yeah, so check that out and pick that up if you can. And I mentioned on one of my other, I think the um, Winter Reads of Sherlock Holmes, I mentioned that this was in the mail, the MX book of new Sherlock Holmes stories. And these are Christmas stories. And uh, I'm about halfway through this and I, I love the stories. I don't think there's a bad one in the bunch. And uh, it's all pastiche fiction, obviously. But there's like 40, over 40 books in this series with all kind of Sherlock Holmes stories and uh, you know I mean to a Sherlock Holmes fan that's like that's just awesome nothing better I, I, I'm really enjoying this and I actually ordered two more so that's kind of an exception for my read what you own challenge if they're Sherlock Holmes stories and they're on sale yeah that's an exception to the to the read what you own challenge so uh, yeah that's that's all I'm going to show you right now um, I've got a lot more on my shelf and maybe as it gets closer to February, I'll show you some more. And when I figure out what I'm going to do for all my prompts, which I kind of know what I'm going to do, I will, I will let you guys know and I'll share them with you. So, uh, I, again, I'm so glad that you guys are joining us in, uh, in this reading challenge. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm just, I'm so excited for it. So I'm going to let you guys go. You take care and keep reading.